this video we're going to be looking at cofactors and coenzymes and how they affect the enzyme rates, reaction rates, and also inhibitors and poisons and how they affect enzyme reaction rates. So starting with cofactors and coenzymes. Cofactors and coenzymes are small non-protein molecules that enhances the enzyme's function. So you can see here we have an enzyme. Now the enzyme by itself is called the apoenzyme. The whole enzyme altogether with all of its functional units is called the holoenzyme. We have a cofactor, we also have a coenzyme and they're both linked at the catalytic site. So this is the active site where the substrate will bind. They may bind temporarily or permanently to an enzyme. Usually cofactors and coenzymes help to form the active site. However, they can actually bind to other sections of the enzyme as well. The cofactors of some enzymes are inorganic and these include zinc, iron or copper. If the cofactor is organic, it's actually known as a coenzyme. And many vitamins are coenzymes. So they may bind loosely to the active site and both active site and the substrate. Here we have an inactive protein without a cofactor attached. So without the cofactor, the enzyme will not be able to bind to the substrate. Here we have a cofactor that's actually bound to the enzyme and it's able to function and bind to with the substrates. The inorganic cofactors, some include met metal atoms of zinc, calcium, iron or copper. The organic um, coenzymes examples are most vitamins such as vitamin B2 and vitamin B5. Cofactors can be easily separated from the protein part of the enzyme but its presence is essential for the enzyme reaction to occur because the enzyme cannot function without the cofactor. A functional enzyme may therefore consist of protein only, or it may be in the form of an enzyme cofactor complex, where the enzyme part of the complex is a protein. Now, poisons are substances that have harmful effect to living organisms, and they are harmful also to enzymes. Some poisons exert their toxic effect by disabling cofactors and thereby inhibiting enzyme functioning. You can see here, there's a poison molecule attached to the enzyme where the cofactor should be. So an example of poisonous substances that disable cofactors include the heavy metals, mercury and cadmium that replace zinc cofactors in some enzymes and inhibit their functioning. An example of an enzyme cofactor is the heme portion of hemoglobin. Now here we have a blood vessel. Within this blood vessel, I thousands of red blood cells. Inside these red blood cells is the hemoglobin molecule. This is a protein. And the heme part of the molecule, this yellow section here, is a cofactor, cofactor that is important for its functioning. The heme cofactor requires iron for its function and is extremely important because it aids in oxygen binding to the red blood cells in the blood. So if it didn't have the iron, it wouldn't be able to bind with oxygen. So now we've finished cofactors and enzymes, and now we're focusing on how inhibitors can slow or reduce the enzyme functioning. We've got both competitive and non-competitive inhibit inhibitors. So certain chemicals can selectively inhibit enzyme activity. Inhibition may be irreversible if the inhibitor attaches by covalent bonds. So covalent bonds are actually stronger than weak non-covalent bonds. Inhibition may be reversible if the inhibitor attaches by weak bonds. Competitive inhibitors. We can see here we have an enzyme and we have a substrate that goes to the active site. Now inhibitors may not be the exact same size as the substrate. You can see here that we have an inhibitor that fits the active site but not big enough to take all of it up. Still, it stops the substrate from binding to the active site. So the competitive inhibitor competes with the substrate for the active site. They block the active site from the substrate. 
If reversible, the effect of these inhibitors can be overcome by increased substrate concentration. Non-competitive inhibitors do not bind to the active site at all. In fact, it binds to another part of the enzyme molecule. The substrate is still able to access the active site. However, it alters the configuration of the enzyme so it is no longer fully functional. A summary of enzymes altogether. Enzymes are made of proteins. Enzymes are catalysts because they control the rate of chemical reaction. Enzymes remained unchanged at the end of the reaction, which means that they're able to be used again and again. They are only needed in small amounts in cells because they're able to be reused. They are highly specific. One enzyme catalyzes one type of reaction, or usually one type of substrate. They work best under certain optimum conditions, including temperature, pH, and substrate concentration. They may need coenzymes or cofactors to help their functioning. This concludes enzymes. Thank you. Thank you.